Welcome to BuildBox 3.2. In this video, we're going to go over how to import an FBX file that contains a 3D animated mesh into your BuildBox video game and set it up as a main character. We will show you how to do this in two parts. First, we will show you how to take FBX files from your computer and import them into BuildBox. Second, we will show you how to use the amazing brain boxes inside BuildBox to make the whole process extremely easy. Let's get started. Before we import an FBX file from your computer, please start by downloading the asset pack we provide you. The link to download the asset pack can be found in the description of this video. Go ahead and open up BuildBox. Let's start with a fresh project. Go to the upper left corner and click Create New, then go down and select 3D Game. If you are in the mind map, go ahead and double click on your 3D world or click the edit button in the upper right hand corner. You can see that we have a nice green field ready to drop our FBX character onto. Go ahead and locate the asset pack folder you downloaded and extract its contents. Next, open up the asset pack folder and drag the gen at idle.fbx file over to BuildBox and drop it into the scene editor as a character. Feel free to minimize or hide the asset pack folder for now, but keep it handy because we will be using it later. Our character is now in the software, but it is overlapping with the cube, so let's use the move tool to move it up a bit. Now let's preview our game so far. Right now, we have a character standing in front of the cube. If you watch closely, the idle animation plays once and then stops. Let's go ahead and fix it so that the idle animation loops instead. To do this, let's exit the preview window and in the asset panel on the left, double click the asset to open up its node map. We can see that when we drop an FBX file into the software, BuildBox automatically creates two nodes that are already connected to the start node. The node to the right is a subscene node that contains the model and skeleton of the asset. The node on the bottom is a keyframe animation node that contains the idle animation that the model and skeleton can perform. So to make this animation loop, select the keyframe animation node and in the options panel on the right, click the looped checkbox. Now, preview the game again. We can see that the character is now idling and the idle animation is being looped. This is looking a little bit better. Let's add some more animations and make this character move around like some of the characters from our favorite video games. Let's exit the preview window and in the navigation bar at the top, click the 3D World tab. Now we are ready to give our character a jump animation. To do this, open up your asset pack folder again. This time, drag the gen at jumppose.fbx file and drop it into the scene. This time, the FBX import options window appears. Whenever you import an asset that contains the same skeleton as a previous asset, you will see this window with several options available to you. With this, we can now add the jump animation to the current asset. Make sure to have the asset on the left selected under the shared skeletons list. There is also a list of the existing animations that are already tied to that skeleton. Make sure to have Modify Selected toggled instead of Create New, or else it will create a whole new character. Next, make sure to have Add Animation selected, and then you can click the Import button. Now, go back to the main character's node map, and you can see a new keyframe animation node was added. This contains the new jump animation that we imported. So now that we have a jump animation, let's go ahead and make this asset jump. To do this, Click to expand the controls category on the left and drag a touch node into the node map. Go ahead and connect the created output of the start node to the enabled input of the touch node. Next, click the movement category to expand it and drag in a jump node. Now, we're going to connect the pressed output of the touch node to three different inputs. The jump input of the jump node, the stop input of the idle keyframe animation node, and the play input of the jump keyframe animation node. Lastly, over in the node panel, click the actions category and drag in an if collide node. Connect the created output of the start node to the enabled input of the if collide node and connect the collided output to the play input of the idle keyframe animation node. Select the if collide node to open up its attributes on the right. Click on the collision shape drop down menu and select hull. Now click on the edit button for the collision mesh to open up the mesh manager window. 
scroll down the list on the left, and select the collision shape with our character's body shown. Then click the save button. Next, select the jump node and let's give the jump node a jump force of 7 in the Y direction. Now we can preview the game. When we click the screen, we can see the character jump, perform the animation, and start idling again when it lands back down. This is coming along nicely. Exit the preview window and let's see if we can do something more complex. We could definitely continue to build out the character node by node like this, but BuildBox has amazing brain boxes that make the whole process lightning fast. Go ahead and delete all the nodes except for the start node so we have a fresh node map to work with. We also want to mention here that you must delete these nodes before adding an FBX related brain box or else you will have multiple meshes in the same asset. Go back to the 3D world and select our character from the asset panel. And in the options panel on the right, click the add brain box button. Go up to the advanced platformer section at the very top and select animated platformer. This creates a list of options that allows us to add a skeleton and multiple animations to our asset, as well as provide a set of movement restrictions. Let's start by selecting a skeleton. Go up to the scene attribute and click on the edit button. This will open up the sub scene manager window. Select the skeleton on the left. You can see the skeleton previewed in the center window as well as an animation drop down list at the bottom. Go ahead and select one of the animations available and press the play button to preview the animation. You can see how convenient it is to test and see how well the skeleton performs in animation. One thing we'll note is that it does not matter what animation you apply to a skeleton in this window, it only is meant for testing animations on different skeletons. Once we're satisfied with our skeleton, click the save button in the bottom right hand corner. Now that we have our skeleton selected, go to the idle animation attribute and click the drop down to select the idle animation. Let's also update the jump animation with the main character jump animation we used before. Open up the asset pack folder again, grab the gen at run.fbx file, drag it over to build box and drop it into the scene preview box of the brain box. Do the same for the walk FBX file as well. Now we can select the animations from the animated platformer animation drop down menus. Go ahead and update the walk animation and the run animation. Let's add one more brain box to enable keyboard controls for our character so we can move them around. Go down and click the add brain box button again and click the keyboard controls brain box. This will automatically add the W, A, S, and D and arrow keys as movement controls to the character. You can also set whichever keys you would like to control jumping and running. Go ahead and preview the game. Wow, the character is able to walk, run, and jump around. You can see that there is quite a bit of sliding going on and the speed is off as well. Let's adjust the speed and friction to better suit this character. Exit the preview window, and with our character still selected, go down to the bottom of the options panel and set the max walk speed to 4 and the max run speed to 8. Let's also go back into the main character's node map and give the character a dynamic physics type. Let's also set the friction to 4. Preview the game again. Try walking, running, stopping, and jumping. This looks much, much better. We have a good looking character that has realistic movement. Now that we have our movement controls set up, we can also set up some camera controls. But first, go ahead and exit the preview window, go back to the 3D world tab, and let's select our camera in the outliner and set the position follow attribute to our character. Next, select our character in the asset panel, then click the add brain box button once more and select keyboard camera controls. With this brain box, you can specify which keys on your keyboard you would like to control the camera movement, and you can change the speed at which the camera rotates around the character. Over in the button attributes, click the fields and press any key that you want to control the camera rotation. Next, set the rotation speed to 2. Now, preview your game again. This time, we can run around with the character and the camera follows the character around. We can also turn the camera around the character by pressing the appropriate keys. 
The last amazing feature we have for you is a UI joystick that will control the character's movement. Exit the preview window and go back down to the bottom right hand corner and click on the add brain box button again. Go up to the top and select mobile controls. Next, in the navigation bar at the top, click the mind map tab. In the node panel on the left, drag the UI screen node out and connect it to our 3D world. Double click the UI screen node and in the asset panel on the left, click the asset library button. From here, double click the joystick node to add it to the asset panel, then click the asset library button once more. Drag the joystick to the UI editor, then hold down the shift key and resize it so that it fits nicely in the bottom right hand corner. Now in order for this to be integrated with our brain box, we need to make sure that the event name attribute on the right matches with the event name of our brain box. So to make these match perfectly, I'll just type a new event name and call it joystick. Next, let's click the 3D world tab at the top, select our asset, and in the options panel, let's find our joystick brain box and in the event name, type joystick. Let's also delete the event group as well. Now let's preview the game again. This looks really great. I think it's time to put the final polish on this character. Let's add a texture to this character to make it look even better. Exit the preview window and let's go over to the animated platformer brain box again and click on the edit button to open up the sub scene manager window. Move the window to the right side of the software so the asset wheel doesn't pop up. Go ahead and select the 3D model you would like to apply the texture to on the right hand side. Open up our asset pack again and drop in the gen underscore platformer dot png file into the texture box for the model. The color of the texture is inherited by the color of the original 3D model. Since ours was gray, make sure to switch the color to white so we get the full vibrancy of the texture. Do the same thing for the ponytail model as well. Click the save button to exit the window. Now let's preview our game again. This is truly amazing. You just created a fantastic looking character without writing a single line of code. Give yourself a pat on the back for finishing this tutorial and taking one big step closer to developing your own video game. Thank you so much boxers for watching this tutorial. We can't wait to see what you make.